257. This is a Yechidis that the Rebbe held with a group of Mukuravim of Rabbi Beryl Baumgarten. Beryl Baumgarten, Allah Hashem. I do not remember Beryl Baumgarten, although I'm certainly old enough. He passed away after my Bar Mitzvah. Beryl Baumgarten was such a special chassid. The Rebbe had a few Beryl Baumgartens, but not many Beryl Baumgartens. Unbelievably dedicated and unbelievably uh, in tune with the Ratzon HaRebbe. His whole life was the Rebbe, there's no doubt about it. There's a photo of Battle Bomb Garden in 1942 43. Rebbe was not yet the Rebbe. They had made a button, a pin, from a Sibu Shabbos. And the Rebbe is standing in front of 770, and you see Shmuel Isaac Popak, all of a Shalom, who was without a beard then, and Battle Bomb Garden with all of his layers, holding the pin and showing it to the Rebbe. Rumor has it that the Rebbe used to keep a pin. <laughs> On the inside of his jacket, the Rebbe had one of those pins of Mesibah He carried it around all the time. He wore a pin. He didn't wear it here, but he wore it inside. The Rebbe carried a pin of Mesibah Shabbos. But they showed him the pins that made for Mesibah Shabbos. Beryl Baumgarten was a very, very Hasidic Shayyid. And he was about Yisurim. He didn't have the most fun life. And he did the Rebbe's work non-stop, consistently, in a very, very dedicated way. What's unusual about Baumgarten, which makes me able to talk about him is, that he, there were different philosophies amongst Hasidim. There were Hasidim who believed you're not supposed to bother the Rebbe. Don't write him, he knows what's going on anyway. So, Battle Baumgart was one of those Hasidim who believed you have to bother the Rebbe nonstop. He used to write to the Rebbe every single day a letter. And they have these letters, his family has these letters. And for a number of bar mitzvahs, for occasions, they've printed some of these letters. And you learn so much about him from the very first years of the Rebbe's Nisiyas how he, his whole Metzius, his whole Metzius was Aleph, to be Makar of Ayit and Yiddishkai, and Beis, to be Makar of Ayit and Rebbe, to Hasidus. And you, he's writing about individual people that he's working on and where he's holding with him. This one is resisting him this way, this one is resisting him another way. It's very, very interesting to read these letters. I don't know who the people he's writing about, and I don't want to know. But you're learning about him, and you see the intimacy of his relationship with the Rebbe. But um, he... Uh, he nudged the Rebbe. That was his philosophy. Now there's a story with him that I heard from Abi Tzvi Grumblat who replaced him in Argentina when he passed away. He was still a bocha. The Rebbe gave him the shlichus. And Abi Tzvi Grumblat is a echad he's, he's, he's also an incredibly special, special person. And Beryl Baumgarten passed away young in the winter of 1979, I believe, Lametes, or maybe Lametes. And the Rebbe gave him the shlichus. But I don't remember the Pratea Sipur. I don't remember the details. But I actually think that this story I once wrote down. The Nikudas of Sipur was that somebody had a baby, a relative of his. And uh, the result of this childbirth, women sometimes suffer postpartum depression. You should know, I know, unfortunately, that oftentimes if it's misdiagnosed, it could be very, very terrible. A girl doesn't know, she's pushing, she changes, and her, her husband doesn't know what to do, and they're afraid to tell the parents, and they're fighting and they're arguing. And by the time people realize what's going on, it's, it, push it, it can be devastating. I, I, I've seen it in my students more than once or twice. People don't know how to identify it, and the kids are afraid to talk because they think that they don't want to tell the parents that they're fighting, their parents are going to make them get divorced, and they don't realize that it's pushed to mental illness. Somebody suffered terrible, severe, severe postpartum depression, and uh, Bethel Baumgarten wrote to the Rebbe about it, one time, two times, three times, and the Rebbe gave broches, but there was no immediate... Uh, At a certain point, Rabbi Baumgarten sent somebody else to bother the Rebbe. I think it was a relative of his. And he bothered the Rebbe either on Yom Kippur itself or out of Yom Kippur. So when he approached the Rebbe and asked the Rebbe for a brocha for the who knows how many times, the Rebbe said, uh, this is Beryl Baumgarten, put you up to it, huh? Anyway, that lady had a full refuah shlema. That's the end of the story. Now, he was, of course, involved in all kinds of activities of the Rebbe. And he obviously brought a group of young adults to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe is talking to them. And the, the spirit of what the Rebbe says is very interesting, very unusual. Because what the Rebbe does in the Sikha here is explain to them winter and spring as childhood and young adulthood. Tell a child that his life is winter. And when you turn 20, that's the spring. That's, that's a very, very... Most people think... The childhood is the string of their lives and it's downhill from there. But that's not how the Rebbe explains it. Everything is the childhood as the winter. Children have lots of fun. I mean, children have so many experiences. And we all remember our childhood better than any other part of our lives. 
It has to do with the fact that the brain was clean, the brain was developing, different parts of the brain were strong with the children. We remember our childhood a lot better than what happened yesterday, and that's just a fact of life. So our childhood seems like it was forever. I mean, how long were we children for? How long? If childhood ends when we're 12, so childhood was 12 years. The first two years you don't remember. You're talking about nine or 10 years, yeah? Think about the last nine years. Did a lot happen? Nothing happened. <laughs> but the nine or 10 years of childhood seemed like forever. That's, it's a wonderful thing. The Rebbe nevertheless sees childhood as the winter of one's life because the Rebbe is looking at a person, not in terms of how many wonderful experiences we've had, but in terms of our purpose. And children are not yet able to fulfill a purpose. They're being conditioned. They're, they're in the initial stages of life. So let's read on. It's a very unusual, very unusual illusion, really. It's now spring and summer. And the Rebbe says to these young people, What's outstanding about spring and summer is which means literally you freshen up. And they become more vibrant, functional. All plants and animals. We wake up, the world wakes up. During the winter, the trees sleep. During the winter, the seeds planted in the earth seem to be at rest. And the animals... Some of them go to sleep also. And those who don't, me out of living. They just survive till the next spring. And then the earth gives forward, and these plants and animals give forward. What we gathered and absorbed during the winter time. In fact, the winter time is not a time of dormancy. It's a time of change, but you don't see the change. In the winter, you don't see what's happening. When the spring comes, everything is reborn, so you see the effects of the wind. And from where do the plants absorb all the things that they needed to be able to be renewed and refreshed in the spring and the summer? from the ground. So the Rebbe says the summer and the spring is a time of, I guess the right language is visible renewal. You start to see newness of life. Though it's been going on for a long time. It says the Rebbe, the Chayn Hagam, Eitam Yadam. The same is true in humanity. Ach Nasam HaEsed, to the age of 20. Harei Zeh Bechin Yestimei HaChayn HaShalem. This is their winter time. Tell that to an ordinary person. And they'll say, wait, child, my best time in my life was my childhood. And it's a fact, I feel that way. Um, I don't know when my childhood ended. It certainly didn't end when I was 15. But whenever it ended, childhood was a lot of good memories. Not such good memories also. A lot of scrapes and bruises. Physical and psychological and mental. But nevertheless, childhood is wonderful. And see, every day in your childhood is as long as a year in your adult life. But the Rebbe is not looking at us and our lives in terms of what we experience. He's looking at us in terms of soldiers in the Abish army, contributors. And in that respect, childhood is certainly a winter because we're taking in all kinds of resources and we're not using them yet. We're just holding them. She'az, that are during that time, children are trying to absorb everything. Then they reach the age of Chafalach, Chabezin, Chabgimel, which means their 21st year, the age of 20, 21, and 22, and so on. Shehein leha aviv that's the spring, which will of course lead to the summer of life. Shobahem kalachah, the echad mistadid, each person acclimates himself. Mi ba'avaydah, some have jobs. Mi ba'asek, some go into business. And ultimately, Madiyam and Yisur, they reach an age of marriage, Bishatevo, Mithakas, and a good and a successful hour. And then you say that we are awakened, the Yiyu Pe'ilim, and Yanamela, we do, we act out all the things we collected in our childhood. Now, I'm reading the Rebbe's words, and there's one thing totally absent from what the Rebbe is describing here that every young adult knows very well, and that is fear. When you're 21 and 22 and 23, just ask, if you forgot, and I didn't, Ask your kids. They're very afraid. They're afraid because they're adults and they don't know how to be adults. They the slightest idea how to be adults. They don't know how to make a living. They don't know how to be a husband or a wife. How to look after a family. The Rebbe is not acknowledging any of those things. Not because he doesn't know about them. <laughs> he knows about them quite well. Very well. Better than us. But because he's focusing on the point. The answer, the answer to the fears of life is to live it. God forbid that the fears of life hold us back. You know, we live in an age of control. People try to manage their lives, to control their lives, to play God. And they don't get married until they're 40. They don't live until they feel safe to live. And that's a tragedy. You have to live life. What about the fears? You have to overcome the fears. The fears are not going to go away. The fears are going to go away when you're 30, 40, and 50, and the Abish are giving you many brachas. 
I had a few opportunities. You know, like, Russian hired me to Fabreng for their 40th birthday, or their wives hired me a few times, four or five times. It just happened. The whole group of Hebra. And uh, now, a kid at the age of 40 is in the prime of worry of his life, yeah, for so many reasons. Yeah. So I sat with these guys who are a little younger than me. I mean, I'm almost 50 now, but then I was a few, I'm just a few years older than them. And I said, thank God we were stupid. Imagine we knew, we were 25, but we know today, we would never have gotten married. We wouldn't have 10 kids. We wouldn't have six kids. We'd be waiting to work it all out. But when you're stupid and you do all of these things, and you look back, he said, Baruch Hashem, thank God, Baruch Hashem, I have the most important thing in life, which is what's forever, which is family, which is children, which is, I guess you would put it in terms terms, creating a new Metzias that has never ever existed. Binyan Adei Ad, your home and your children and their children and the children's children and so on. So that Hebe completely ignores the psychological element. We see childhood as wonderful because we're not afraid. The Rebbe says it's a winter. <laughs> we see young adulthood as a winter because we're so full of fears. You're starting to live. And frankly, he's right. He's right. He's right because this is what you got to do. You have to overcome the fear, not wait till the fear passes. It's never going to pass. And do what you have to do. And then the Ebishter helps. If you trust him, he turns out not to disappoint you. Not necessarily in the ways we planned. We write a script. He has a different script and usually his script is the one that unfolds. But the Dead Lech Cloud, the Ebishter blesses. But you have to trust. So the Rebbe Pushit, he bypasses all of the fears and just talks about the point. Your life begins now. You're able to make choices. You go into business, you become a professional, you're going to get married and build a home. Now stuff is happening. All of the acquisitions, all of the taking in of childhood will now translate and materialize in life. So you have to remember where all these energies come from. The energies to live life. The energies to go forward. And if I may add, the energies to overcome the fear and to live it. The life says the Rebbe Me'atera. It comes from the table. Teda doesn't teach us how to make a living it teaches us how to live and there's a very very big difference between making a living and living you spend your life making a living and you never live the day in your life Teda tells you what you do with the money you earn not how to earn it how do you live life it's necessary for all of humanity to take from the earth they were considering the Teda the earth the source of life during our earlier years Lumudim v'herois, teachings and lessons. Kedeshem ucha yes, as we mature and grow up, Yishtam shu b'kach, we'll be able to utilize these lessons and messages, Kedeh lich yes, in order to live chayim p'ilim, vital, functional, dynamic lives. Shekol echad v'echad, which means, in other words, that each one of you and us, Yihi yameire derech umanik, and the Rebbe says in Yiddish, in English, leader, each one of us should be a leader, Bisviva say in his environment. It's conceivable that the Rebbe said the whole in English. I don't know who he is talking to. It could be that it was all said in English, you know. But I'll call upon him and basis. If you're least you're a leader in your own home, and of course in your own home you don't want to teach your children how to worry, you want to teach your children how to live. Ves hakeach vairoyis lozed the strength and the directions for all of this, Makaba may I tell you we take from the table. Says Rabbi behind this means. Shalagabe ha'adam, when it comes to persons, man us it our future. You may have other vakayets, our spring and our summer, who Tom of Vanilla. We don't know it. We don't, if we knew the future, we would, in one way or another, not worry. But we do not know it. And frankly, as some of us have learned over the course of our lives, thank God we didn't know it. A person thinks, how can I prepare myself? How can I ready for myself for all kinds of events and advents that I'm unfamiliar with? I don't know what they're going to be. Says the Rebbe, so the Eibush that gives us shekol chiluki asman and the chedef of the kaitz v'stov hemidati abeder. But the entire cycle of winter, spring, summer, and fall come from the Eibush that es teira se apodesh. The teira, the teira doesn't come with a unique section for you and tells you this is your life. This is how you prepare. The teira has everybody in mind. And when you learn the teira, your messages are there as well. She amei lano b'chol lano. It gives direction in all aspects. Gamelu asidim lias. Even those things that have yet to be are in the Torah, and there's an element of trust necessary to be able to go from the winter into the spring and summer. 
Shahri Atla Yitzbarak as far as Hashem is concerned, the Asit, Muha Abba Bishaba, past and future are the same. So he sees what's going to be. He sees it's going to be by each person in each environment and each generation and so forth and so on. And he gave the tailor to all of us in all times and in all places. And of course, the person says, this is difficult. How can I prepare for life? How can I go forward and live? I'm unprepared. I don't know what's going to be. The, the translation of those words literally is that the load reflects the camel. The more you can carry, the more they put on you. And if the Eidushter, Moser Vetziva, gave over and instructed, Lanu to us, as Teirei Sav, Teirei Sav, who Mitzvei Sav, his Teirei is Mitzvah. He, Ha'erai, Ha'erai, Ha'amitas, that's the ultimate proof. Shabakechenu Lalam Dalashamu, we could learn it and guard it and keep it, and let that be the basis for how we live our lives, Bakay al Mamsh. This is the initial message. So the Rebbe sees this is. I don't think a person on the planet would say this. What is the winter of a person's life? Your childhood. Do a study. Go to anybody you want and ask them if a person's life were divided up into winter, spring, summer, and fall, what would be winter? I don't, no one would say childhood. And you see, the Rebbe's perspective is two points. Number one, during your childhood, you're really not contributing yet. And during your childhood, you're taking in lessons. The winter, the Rebbe doesn't see as a dormant time, as a dysfunctional, as a passive time. He sees it as a time of taking in what you're going to later give out in the spring and summer. That's his perspective. And we read on. Once the spring and the summer comes, the fruit, they blossom, they sprout, they grow, they ripen, yeah? But they can also rot. Turn the page, you have to keep them in an atmosphere, in a temperature, in an environment. That guards them against against decomposition, against rot. Over there, a cloud, and of course, in the modern world, machazik yameisim be makarei, keep them in a fridge or a fridge of the eight of So the Rebbe, here's a second message. The first message is that how we live comes from the Torah. The second message is where we live keeps those messages from rotting away. Shu mazen yiruch nitayir v'aderach zeh b'tayir shem mazen yiruch. Tayir is a spiritual nourishment. Teda needs an environment, a uh, temperature, which guards so the of chas v'shalom it shouldn't rot, and we have to preserve that. What is the temperature which guards and protects our teda? The behavioral ritual performance of mitzvahs. Shehem avira, which is the necessary environment regulator. When we do mitzvahs. It keeps the hashkaf as a chai. Mitzvahs are boring. Philosophy is interesting. But the mitzvahs are the anchors, that the ideas that we were taught by the Torah about how to live our lives and what's important and what's not important in living is preserved by the mitzvahs that we do as we live. When a person starts his life, he doesn't find any meaning in mitzvahs ma'asias. Come in and tell us, I'm shakas. What do I gain by washing my hands with a cup three times in the morning? Tefillah, davening, baruch saying barakas. As our life continues, we learn to appreciate their taste. And he gives an example. A little child doesn't want to go to school. But he would love to eat ice cream. School, negative. Ice cream, positive. To other sweets, or to play ball and so forth. The obvious reason is because in his youth, he sees no advantage, no benefit from what he learns in school, like chemia, physics, chemistry, and physics, physics, and so forth. Ice cream and other tasty sweets and ball. Margishu he feels you know why because miyad it's immediate. The taste and the pleasantness in it. But of course, ice cream is not going to get you very far and education will get you very far. The same is true in our case. As we begin our lives, even as adults, we are relative to our Yiddish guys like children. We don't see the Gishmach in the life we're living. We must acclimate ourselves, condition ourselves, 
as they say in Yiddish, to Bissala, step at a time to behave performance of mitzvahs. The end is, Yalgish, we come to realize, Shaydei Zemes, Alam, Azdachach, we have uplifted and purified and so on. You know, keeping the Shokhan is so important. I know it sounds like a stupid thing to say, but keeping all the dinu, even the, the, the Hazhores and the Harchakes and things like this, it's so important. And it's not only important because if you don't do it, you're going to go to Gehenna. Because they're good for us. They preserve us. They keep us as Jews. And when we forget that, and we start to compromise in those areas, in the end, we end up being bitten in the foot by a venomous snake, and it, Rahman san, it can poison the whole person. The, ty- the, shokha, the, the boring details of Allah are not the, the meaning of our lives. But it's the framework, it's the guard, it's the rail that keeps the meaning of our lives where it's supposed to be. And eventually we come to appreciate them, says the name. Behaving is the basis for a rewarding life, a meaningful life. The reason for this is the argument that we don't feel meaning in our mitzvahs. The chain hamas lois a shenish as a potato all the excuses which we don't want to learn tefes. He matasa yates and harash and bekol rachem becha. This is the yates of hardest counsel in each person. The amul chama she has to kol rachem beechad bazeh he is gabbas al yates. The war is to overcome the yates and harash. Well, the chayik asher adam gave it al yates when you win the yates and harash. Misnayeg al pi atero makayim a mitzvah smaiches and we in fact learn tefes and do the mitzvahs. Eisa shalom it gives peace. It makes us feel good. You know why? Because we really know that Yitzhak is a bad guy. He's very tempting. He's very convincing. He's very, very intense and intent. But he wants to destroy us. And we know it. And when we don't, we successfully do not listen to him. We actually are happy, not just for the spiritual reward, but for the practical reward as well. It gives us shalom and harmony. Hedamonia, harmony. The Atem Kulcham and Rebbe concludes all of you Lilmdu Yesa Tata learn more Tata, the Kaimu Yesa Mitras do more mitras. Nintoya Matem El Allah Dara Khamit, if you're on the road of truth, El Shalekam is Khazik, you must strengthen yourselves, Kidela Kiala Matala to achieve the Matala, the end, the point. Have a life that's of meaning, but Aide Lima the Tata Vikima Mitras, learn Tata and doing mitras will bring us shalom and harmony, shalom peace and harmony to all of us. And the Rebbe finishes in a very gishmake invitation. Mizman lizman miskayem is kan is fadis. From time to time, says the Rebbe, there are fabrengids here with him. Uvachayin boyul akan. Come here. Venisvada yachad will fabreng together. Nosha yachad will sing together. Then nirkid yachad and will dance together. This is an invitation from the Rebbe. Come here. We'll fabreng. We'll sing. We'll dance. Come around. Boyu im abesura teva. Come with this good news. You've won the inner war. The needs of tzaddik and holiness has defeated.